Are we ready this time for the Mountain Bike Podcast presented by GMBN number 15? Yeah. I'm here this week, Neil Donoghue, uh, over there in the red shirt, uh, Steve Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Italian theme going on this week. Is that right? Yeah. Um, well, you've just been to Italy. Me and Jack has been to Italy. Summer to sea. We didn't know how far we were going to do much climbing or descending. We got 15% into the trip and you used 40% of the time. Bit of a monster. That yeah, was. we were with some big, uh, big ride. former downhill riders, Fabian Burrell, uh, ex-world, Cup, world, ex-world downhill champion, I and remember uh, Scott Sharples, who's driver track. Did back in the day, yeah, and a crazy skier from that famous uh Daniel Tunnel Blige called Nico Antonio. He's a bit of a boy, wasn't he, Jack? Yeah, he's very wild, that man. Yeah, Jack is behind the camera this week with a microphone yeah. so he can give us uh his pearls of wisdom and or maybe a well, bit of Frank, Frank Sinatra. Yeah, that's not happening. Come on, Jack, no, no, no. don't be shy now. No, Sing no. the theme tune. <laughs> uh, like the theme tune. So, <laughs> this week we're talking, I did it more. Come on, Jack, you singing it last week. <sighs> not happening, not happening. Back to Italy, Don. Italy, we're talking about Val de Soleil, mm-hmm. um, where we had a double header. We had downhill mm-hmm. and cross country. Was well, it a triple header? Well, I suppose it is. We crossed XC yeah. short yeah. track as well on the Friday. I like it. I can sit in the office at work on a Friday afternoon and watch a bit of racing. Mm. And it is exciting racing. But uh, women's downhill, Don, uh, it's been decimated, right? This year, with the, with the injuries all over the place, with you know Miriam Nicole, Tani Seagrave. I think Miriam Nicole Bridge. is on the way back. Yeah, I see yeah. a bit she of a ride down a bike, didn't she? Yeah, she's done a she's few laps. Mm. Yeah, but uh, it really has crippled that that category, right? So Rachel Aston snapped her Achilles at Leger the last mm. round uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I think we must have talked about it. In the we last have talked. We have yeah. talked about it. But the point is, is that when you look, I mean, congratulations to. Uh, Marine Cabarou for for winning the race. Yeah, uh, you know a massive, massive eleven second win uh, from Tracy Hanna. My well, bad. Uh, let's talk about that quickly. Why you? Um, well, that's a big gap. Do you think Tracy Hanna is thinking points game already? We're just over the halfway through the season, and she is leading the overalls, which we'll talk about more in, in a second. But yeah, it was a bit of a surprise to see Marine win by that much over Tracy. It was a huge win. Um, I'm looking at the numbers here, and uh, I've got to, I've got to stop because it's down as an 18 second gap to uh, third place. But yeah. I'm sure it's more than I'm sure it's almost 30 seconds. So from Tracy, then back to third place, Camille Blanche, yeah. 18 seconds. Yeah, you know that's that's a that's a huge margin, right? I it's mean, a big gnarly track. We haven't talked about track at all yet. It's Shall we talk about the track? Well, it's one back in my day. We'll go back to these old stories again. Mm. But when I rem- did you ride it first? Um, it was a while ago. We raced European champs there, yeah. probably 07, 08. And uh, it was one of those, I was quite good technically. I remember people saying, oh, you'll love this track. It's, there's no pedaling. It's really technical. I showed up there and I hated it. Always hated it. Why? Just because it was really dangerous. <laughs> It was like, it was, yeah, I know you said it's not steep, but it's at the point of like, you're always picking up speed. You're never just chilling or you're always breaking hard. And it's just, just so wide, it's taped so wide and there's horrible rocks everywhere and you can't see them because of the dappled light, the roots, the dirt. So it always felt like you were a second away from a massive crash. Mm. And people did. It's where Cedric really hurt himself. Oh, that was a really bad crash, wasn't it? That's that's because he caught a tree with his brake lever. Oh, yeah. And uh, he had no brake. He went down through this this rock section. That was a bad, that was a life-threatening injury. Did he? Yeah, it was like a broken pelvis or something. He got flown to Trento. He was there for quite a while. But going back to what you said, Don, um, yeah, there's no time to chill on that track, is there? It is intense from start to finish, just rock and its roots. And I, I, I'll stick to my words, it isn't actually that steep. Everyone says mm. it's the most steepest technical track on the circuit. When you get to the lower slopes of, of Val Nord, that, I mean, that is steep. Yeah. And it's, but, but the thing with Val de Sol is like, you know, I've heard loads of the top riders say over the years that, you know, like even like Sam Hill and Steve Peters saying, I can't hold on to the handlebars. Because it's relentless. And you saw can't people... Can't hold, hold on to the handlebars. Did you see, was it Brosnan? Came across the line shaking his hands. Yeah. You couldn't really tell if it was just like gesticulating what had just happened or if his hands were just really hurting him. Yeah. But and I, I think I think there's a specific uh, bike setup for Val Sol. Lots of spaces under the stem. Yeah, I think so. And I think high rise bars, maybe your bars maybe pulled back uh, more mm. than you would normally because... Yeah, your body's taking a huge amount of, of, a, of a beating. Each of those rocks and roots all the way down the hill. So what do you think that it is? Is that people trying to keep the balance 
almost to the back of the bike and use their legs more to save their arms or I think so because well obviously if you can't hold on to the handlebars and when you yeah. when you go into those last corners because it actually gets a little bit loose before you break into the field and uh, there's some there's some loose rocks and what you don't want is to be weak when you're on loose chip-ins because you're going to go down mm. you're going to go down I mean and people do go down on Val Sol do you know what funny story Don I'm going to tell you this Jack you're going to love this one <laughs> so I'm go. sat in the kitchen this is the weekend just gone by because yeah. I got back I was travelling I got back so I watched the Val Sol replay and I'm watching, and there's an interview with Gwyn. Warner interviews Gwyn. You know, he's out to the broken thumb, so Warner's asking why about all that. And then then I see that the qualifying was wet and some of the top riders placed badly. And then I'm watching the finals, and then and then uh, obviously, you know, Bruni and those guys come down early. And uh, and then Warner says, oh, yeah, you know, maybe they're taking the same... same uh, same idea as as uh, Tani Seager. I'm thinking, hold on, Tani Seager wasn't racing. So basically, I'd watched last year's <laughs> But it panned out. The thing is, right, you, you watch, if you watch it, it comes down to, it comes down to Laurie Greenland and he, take, he takes the lead. And it's the same happens in 2018 that happened in 2019. Wow. It's absolutely mental. Well, I spent two hours watching but what, on, what on. a f***ing half wet. Jane was, laughing. Jane was laughing right off. <laughs> um, well, it was a brilliant win from Laurie Green. And the, his first ever World Cup downhill win. Mm -hmm. um, he's a local boy, almost to GMBN Towers. He lives sort of <clears> 15 Bristol, 50 yeah. miles away in Bristol. Yeah. So plenty of people here in the office, as you do, know him yeah. very well. well and I've I seen him grow up. I took him on one of his first road trips, actually. Uh, funny story. There we go. There's so a, Jane, with this one. <laughs> so Jane, my wife, said, uh, look, you're going to wait. Remember, he's only 16. <laughs> she goes, whatever you do, don't give him any booze, right? <sighs> so we we go to pick him up in Bristol. His dad drops him off and uh, he gets in the back of the van and the guys, I won't mention who they are, first thing you do, give him a four-pack of Stella, right? I'm not sure we should really talk about this. But <laughs> <laughs> is Stella telling to who it is? <laughs> no. But then Stella turned to Guinness, blah, blah, blah. This is probably not a very responsible podcast. Very unresponsible, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, however, going back to Laurie Greenland, he was always going to win a World Cup race, right? Yeah, I mean, probably a Val Sol as well, to be fair, yeah. from what we've seen in the past. We said two seconds there before. It was the World Champs, wasn't it, where he came can, second? Can I go back to the booze? <laughs> we, we just thought he needed a bit of bulking. Classic. bit of bulking. Bulking. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's still not very big now. <laughs> oh, he is. He's a bigger guy now than he was. Well, funny enough, actually, we've talked about uh, Laurie with Ollie Beckinsale, who's been in right. his new podcast, because the guy who uh, Ollie's in business with uh, mm. trains Laurie, actually. So yeah. over at their shop, they've got a training facility, and Laurie trains with Andy, I think his name is. Mm. Yeah, so great to see him take his first win. And things were changed around quite a lot because there was crazy thunderstorms in qualifying. Mm -hmm. So when you watched the Red Bull yeah, TV, yeah. you saw some names on there you, you're not used to seeing. And actually, a lot of them performed really well. Although it, it was almost anticlimactic because they weren't coming down and knocking people off. Mm. They were coming down and probably having their best results ever. Yeah. So some I mean, really so great like Jack, you know, Jack Redding, he, he did, did pretty well, actually. Um, but... Um, David Palazzari, who yeah. um, gave the, I think he gave the horns as he's about to leave the start hut. And I said to my son, it's only three. I was like, watch this one. <laughs> I think we might see a crash. Because you, you almost, oh, I don't want to uh, bad mouth uh, David, but someone who qualifies really well for their first time ever. I mean, I've done it. You yeah. think you show up and you see the, you know, yeah, it's all or nothing, basically. Yeah, we've seen Ed Masters do it at Fort William. Yeah. 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 Goes down on a But no. A great result. He got 12th, actually. Yeah. So and the jeans, the man in jeans. 13th. Von Klemsberg. The, yeah. the, the denim destroyer. The denim destroyer. So in the top 15, there is Forrest Riesco, those two guys, David Palazzari and Von Klemsberg, and also David Trummer, who are all uh, unsponsored, privateers. Mental. Three in the top 15. Yeah. Uh, going back to Laurie, right? So he's 22 when his first World Cup. Uh, Josh Bryceland, Danny Hart, they didn't win their first World Cup till they were 25. So he, he's, he's above schedule, I think. I mean, you do have the likes of, of I'm talking British riders here, obviously, not, not kind of riders from other countries. Um, but uh, G. Athen, he won when he was 18, I think. He won in Schladming. Schladming. Thank you, Jack. Well, I remember that day as well. Yeah. Um, and I guess he, he now joins a, a quite a big list of British riders who've won... 
Will Cattell's, right? Like your yeah. colleague, your colleague from Mark Beaumont. Mark he Beaumont. won Val de Sol. He did, he did in indeed. Marley. Well, it was dry, but it was it's always gnarly. He he legit won that race. Very spectacularly. Yeah. Um Can I talk about Amory Piron for a second? Well, now, he still came fourth. Yeah. But I was talking to a few guys last week, some top French racers. Um I'm I'm not gonna say who it was. You know, Fabian Burrell. Well, no, I was with Fabian. I was with quite a few top French racers last week. And some of them think he's actually pushing the risk game a little bit too far. Laurie? No, um, Amory Piron. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Because when you see that run Leger, it was it was wild, wasn't it? But funnily, I thought his Val de Sol run looked a I, bit underwhelming. It did, didn't it? It did. I, I'm wondering if someone had actually told him, look, you need to back off a touch here because you're going to go down. Yeah. And it did look, it looked a bit stiff. It looked a bit pedestrian, to be honest, didn't that it? That is a very uh, mature ride. If, 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 if that has, is the case, to back it off and come forth is a pretty good way of doing it. Yeah, totally. Well, it's a very good way of doing it. Um, but some other, I mean, I think Danny Hart could have actually won that race. It was so bad luck he had a puncture. Mm. Uh, right at the end, wasn't I, it? I agree, but there's always someone, and I'll say it this time. Here we, go, here we go. Here riders, we go. Rider's, rider's mistake, puncture, rider's yeah. mistake. Rider, oh, crikey. Now there's, there's a feature in that, Don. There's a GMBN <sighs> feature in that. Are punctures, rider's mistakes? I would say probably yes, most of the time. Who punctured last week in the Molini when they didn't have to? This big man over here. Jack, I punch a lot and I break a lot of mechs. Oh, Jack Steve, I'm enough. sorry, Steve. Oh, Steve, I'm really sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to go with that knife-edged rock. <laughs> as hard. Actually, I didn't mean to land on that knife-edged rock. Well, well I've, I've seen him do that before. <laughs> also, himself and Blake did a massive ride around Somerset. What? How far was that? Like 80 kilometres. It was mm. a big ride. Fortunately, it was in the last two kilometres. <laughs> Jack broke a mech off. Trend, oh, Jack yeah. did actually break a mech as well I last did ask week. Pete, yeah. our mechanic, if uh, we could order some new mechs and uh, Jack get some Max. Greg Minar. Greg Minar went down also. when he was in the lead. And I, insane. Plus, insane. Plus seven seconds for seventh place. Yeah. Again, we can't, you know. He'd have been podium, right? He definitely would have been podium. He would have accelerated his lead further down the bottom, wouldn't he? However, he it's like the puncture thing, you know. If my auntie Riding. had it, she'd be my uncle. Yeah. <laughs> That's very true. You know. It's racing. <laughs> Let's go low and lower. I could be, be you, people. you could be me. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, Go it was all. a great ride from Minar, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but he didn't win it. He crashed. Yeah. 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 But what right, I right, thought, right at the bottom, the people wisdom. seem to have made, made a lot of time up on that last left, right, and then the straight into the finish line. It's like some people were, that last split is quite close to the bottom. And some people were on like 1.4 up or 1.4 down and they'd come into that last well, straight and they'd be sprinting their ass off and they'd still make they'd make up so, time. So my question is you, uh, Jack. I think Jack. that last bit must make up. If you get it right, it must make up half a second. So, so, our, word of, uh, right so our wisdom pundit in the background here, what wins Val de Sol? <laughs> what's, the, what's the essence? What is What nails you that race? Is that Going help? the fastest probably, Steve. I you know, talking about Sam Hill. I think Sam Hill's run is still the one of the craziest runs I've ever seen. Yeah. And he still like if you replayed Sam Hill now, it would look as mental as ever. There's it? a couple of people go went inside on that corner. Brooke Donald, Brooke, someone yeah. else. Laurie it, did it. Did he? Yeah, I was going to say it was, a little bit. Not not as inside as probably Sam. I was going to say that Brooke, but... Brooke looked again a little bit underwhelming. You think, whoa, look, he's gone inside. Oh, it didn't make any difference on time. Do you think his fitness that wins the race? You're I reckon be strong. on that track probably you have to mm -hmm. be super strong but then you look at the size of Brooke and then you look at the size yeah. of Laurie and what about Don, Don maybe you, maybe you simply yeah, weren't fit enough to ride the track be, that's why you hated it I don't think you need to be three three people talking strength. at the moment yeah. I don't think you need to be <laughs> a certain strength I think you just need to be lean enough and strong enough for your own body weight you don't have to I don't know I don't know Laurie doesn't have to lift as much as Brooke to be a quicker rider down that sort of a track because he's not holding up as much weight as Brooke would be. What about David Trummer going off, changing the subject slightly? David Trummer has had well, a brilliant no, Don, season. I think you should answer Jack's question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should get him down. Okay, guys, uh, you should get Laurie down versus Brooke McDonald. Who can do the most press ups? Is it as simple as that? Is it as simple as that, Jack? I don't think it is, no. <laughs> Okay, back to David Trummer. <laughs> He's had a brilliant season. He finished, what was it, sixth? 
Yep. Um, and sitting overall, he is he tenth. Five. That is pretty incredible. Um, someone who well, he's got a SRAM ride, I think, hasn't he? SRAM YT or something. He is YT's he guns? top rider. Yeah. <laughs> I'm presuming you know next to his name there is not a UCI uh, registered team, so. As far as I can tell, that means privateer, although he is riding with support from YT and SRAM possibly. But incredible season, really. He's had an 18th, 15th, 59th, so that's dropped him a load of points, but a 7th, an 8th, and an 8th in the last three rounds. It's not bad. And the series now goes to... Next round is in Lenzerheide next weekend, um, which is one of the easiest tracks, we're going to say, of the season. Uh... I'd say yeah, but then the conditions of the track are, make it quite hard because it's all that gravelly, loose yeah. stuff and you could easily wash and easily ruin your race run in a Lenza second. would be my worst nightmare, whereas Valisol is one of my favourite tracks I've ever ridden. Yeah, true. I agree with that. I would hate to ride Lenza Have you it's... ever raced Valisol? Yes, I have. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say normally it's a different matter. But of riding versus it's a di- it's a di- but like it's lens. It's quite good to look ahead, isn't it, to the, to the race coming up. I mean, Greg Menard has been really strong. The look, Bruni's been really strong there. Mm-hmm. Greenland won his world championship there. Is that right? I think. I don't know. Junior. Junior. Yeah. Did he? No, at Lenzerheide. Is that right? Me. Anyway. There's there's some people that do well at Lenzer Hyde and some do absolutely terrible. Predictions? Because predictions. Uh I reckon I reckon Greg will get that podium or win that he's been looking for, actually. And I think a load of people are gonna go down in a ton of dust at Lenzer Hyde. But who's gonna take it's gonna, gonna be could be a turning point. I mean, Bruni and Piron need to keep on their bikes. True. And do you think this will give Laurie Greenland a bit of wind beneath his wings and it'll be... Do a Danny Hart. Well, I you mean like wind beneath his wings like like uh, Brennan Fairclough at uh, Leger? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Where was Brendan on the weekend? What, I... 27th, I think he was. Yeah, sort of back to um, mm-hmm. where he was before, I suppose. Um, yeah. Jack, comments on that? No, he doesn't want to haven't... upset Brandon, basically. <laughs> no, I don't have a comment. I don't need to comment. It's, it's easy. Brandon, Jack has got your back. Because he's, lo- he's a local, Jack. He's a local. Yeah. yeah. Right, on Let's move on to the cross country. So, started with short track on the Friday, yeah. which it rained heavily before the women's race, and it looked pretty, pretty tough going, because it's mainly grass, a lot of drifting going on. Um, and sort of dried out a bit before the men's. It looked like, you know, when the mud starts sticking and almost started to get worse for the men's race, if anything. But Yolanda Neff took uh, another win in the short track. Uh, so looking super strong. Sinner free in third. In second, Pauline Fran in third. Fran Provost had a, as we've talked about before, actually, a very good comeback from an injury right at the start of the season. She's really sort of worked hard to get back there and looking great. How come Kate Courtney is intent? So Kate Courtney did not have a great weekend mm-hmm. uh, in the short track or the ma- in the main race. I think um, I saw on her Instagram thing that she doesn't particularly like riding in the rain. So, but you know, well, the main the main was dry. The main is So when it came rain to Sunday, it was actually very hot and dry. So who knows there? Um, she just cut from. Who, yeah, it's been a tough season. She's been doing really, really well. Um, Elite men. Well, Matthew Van der Poel, Van der Poel, who, yep, that's his second short track win of the year, who Don, was, had a battle with Avancini for quite a lot of the race, actually. Don, I've got to say to you, how come Nina Shirt is in fifth place? Like, was, had he done too much he training the like week before? The, he doesn't really like pushing himself for the short track. Okay, so. let's move on to the subject a little bit later then. Well, <laughs> Nino actually asked him this question about short track, how it's changed things, when we had a lovely lunch at his house in yeah. between the training sessions. Yeah. And he says he if the win is there, he'll go for it, but he's not gonna really you know work in his himself too hard if there is some points yeah yeah you, you he wants to it's really important it's yeah, a world cup win there's half points so it's a pretty substantial amount of points for that race but it's not worth himself emptying himself to try and beat someone like van Poel or avancini who do really well at short track just to try and win but if the win is there he'll go for it were his exact words is, is there any different bike setups for the for the different events well, they have to ride the same bike 
Right. So yeah. they'll they pick whichever one they want. And yeah. there's a bit of a mix. We still see more hardtails in the women's race than in the men's. Yeah. But whatever you ride Friday on, you've got to ride Sunday on. And Vanderpool actually rode his Canyon Lux both times. So short travel, hundred mil travel bike. And I think um I think almost all the men were riding uh, full suspension bikes. So the cross country then, that was quite an exciting conclusion, wasn't it? Yeah. So like and I said the women's especially, there's like yeah. yeah, a hot race, and it looked like Yolanda Neff with a lap left was had it wrapped up. She had a thirty second lead on on uh, I think Yalaboyne, Yana Balamoyna at that point. But um, then Pauline Ferrampero made a big effort, come back, and caught her up on the la the last lap and outsprinted her. Basically, it came down. You know, Ferrampero was leading into that sort of last corner, but that she outsprinted Yolanda Neff. So great win for her. Yeah. Don, uh, personal question for you. I've see, I seem to see you riding a lot of cross-country bikes in the last year. Are you leaning more towards that sport In the now? last few years, actually. Right, okay. Um, What's the word? Uh, I just... Is, 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 am I imagining or is it actually no, true? No, I really enjoy it. Yeah. Um, I've definitely become a big fan of the racing, so mm. I actually really appreciate the racing now. Well, um, it is exciting, isn't it? Yeah. And for me, I just, I like ragging a little bike around. <laughs> so I've now put, for BC Bike Race, I've sort of, up, you know, trailed mm -hmm. it out a bit. I've put wider, wider bars on, shorter stem, bigger fork. Mm -hmm. So it's moved a bit more to the extreme end of things. But it's a great bike to really work hard downhill and you can fly up the hills on them now. There's, there's such a light, um, capable bike, that Canyon Lux. Yeah. That, must have been quite an insight for you then when you, I don't know if you've talked about this on the podcast before, about going to see uh, Nina Scherzer and doing training with him. Have, have we discussed this? I did one? briefly with Cy. Um, right. We did the Tour de France one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the video has just come out yesterday. Yeah, it's definitely worth a watch, that is. Yeah, have a look. There's been a few questions that actually we should have answered in the video, to be fair. We didn't. Mm -hmm. Somebody, a lot of people are saying that Nino's only doing half squats and they're taking right. the mickey out of him. Basically, he said to us, he only does half squats. It doesn't go all the way down yeah. below parallel yeah. because you don't do that on a bike. You don't yeah. bend your knee that much. So, And you'll also see that in the video, he sort of does a squat and on the way back up, he pushes, he tries to do it as fast as possible. So what weights is he pushing on a squat then? He was doing 130, 130 kilos, um, right. but that was after our circuit session. Yeah, And then he does... Five reps. Hundred yeah, sets. Five, five, five reps. No, yeah, five reps, three sets. I think. No, other way around. Three, three reps, five sets. Three reps, one hundred and thirty kilos. But as soon as you've done the squats, you go over and do that big jump onto yeah. the block. So really explosive. Can, can you can you squat one hundred and thirty kilos? No. <laughs> well, um, actually, he's probably the same size as you, right? Uh, he is sixty-five kilos. No, he's lighter than I am. Right. He's completely ripped, as you'd expect. Yeah. But I actually, in my injuries uh, make it more difficult to squat, I say. <laughs> my right ankle doesn't bend very well. And <laughs> Your my, leg doesn't bend. And my left leg is still... Wrist. No, it doesn't move Back. Well. That's the first squats I've done since my leg injury. So what squats do you push then? I, I can't remember what I would used to do before injuries, but then I was doing it in like 60. Yeah. Like nothing. I think you went up to 70 at one point. Possibly. Right. Right. Blake was... Blake's a big guy. Blake did right. 100. Doing 100. So Nino shirt is doing 130. <laughs> Oh, that's insane. Got I mean, Blake's, Blake's shoulders are like this. Yeah. Well, and he, Blake can only do 100. That's mental, isn't it? For Fair a guy, mind. he's squatting Best more, than double his, yeah. more than double his body weight. And then we had lunch, beautiful lunch in Nina yeah. Shirt's house. What did you have, actually? Uh, pasta. Right. A uh, bit of, what's Tomatoes that salad? Right yeah, what's that salad? Uh, anyway. Dessert? <laughs> yeah, coffee from oh, his very nice. fancy machine. Yeah, yeah. And a bit what's of chocolate. His, what's his house like? Very nice. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> this is in Khur, right? It is. Right, okay. Uh, you had chocolate as well? 85% or what? Uh, yeah, it was pretty And he gave us some 100% cocoa he did. chocolate, which was... I didn't have that. It's gross. Interesting. I've had it before. God, Jack lives the life, didn't he? But... Well, I work hard. So he you. did. But going on to the race, the men's elite race... All that was not good enough for Nino to take the win. <laughs> <laughs> All that GMBN prep. Yeah. Crikey. Third oh. place, 53 seconds back. That's another thing I was going to say. That was a legit training session. We were very lucky that that was one of his most important training sessions of the year mm -hmm. in that gap between races. And he was like, yeah, you can come and film it, but I, this is my session. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, we can't talk. We can't. Yeah. So we basically tried to copy what I'd Nino did. I'd love to have a go at that. Really, you really, it was really, I would, I would genuinely no, like to, death, go. Steve, it was, it was really hard. horrible. I That's felt right. very, very sorry for those boys. They were, but anyway, on to the cross country. Whatever you do, 
Make sure you watch it. Don't just listen to it. Yeah, do it. <laughs> Check it out. Watch us suffer. There's a the race. There's a group of three of them on the last lap. So Nino, Matthias Flukiger, and Matthew Van der Poel. And it all sort of exploded. Um, Nino did go to the front and looked like he tried to put a bit of an attack in, but it just wasn't to be. The other guys swamped him straight away. Van der Poel just bombing off the front of the pack, as he'd done in the short track. The speed he went up that climb was breathtaking. He virtually did the same thing after an hour and a bit's racing in the cross country. But actually, Matthias Fucker, I thought, was really impressive. Yeah, he, still drop, he dropped Shirter. He dropped Shirter. And, and really, it's, it's those guys that are looking like they're in it for the overall this oh. year. How old is Van der Poel? Uh, he is young. Let me have a look. or two? Whoa, oh, sure. He's, crikey. Might even be... Old, it might be a couple of years older. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to find that very quickly. Right. But he is super young. Uh, obviously, he's a bit of a phenom. As Rob was saying on the, on the live feed, his granddad became second at the tour. His dad won stages at the tour. Really? Wow. Family okay. of, you know, very special cyclists. Yeah. Who we expect to see go to road after he's probably won the Olympics <laughs> <laughs> next year. Um, so, yeah. Um, in the overall... Let's start with the ladies. Uh, Yolanda Neff is now winning the overall from Kate Courtney, who, like we said, didn't have a great weekend. Mm -hmm. She was 10th in the short track, 17th in the XCO. How many points away is she in second place? Not a lot. 18, right. 35, no, 33. Um, so Yolanda Neff has just squeaked out a lead and Terpstra in third place, Pauline Frampevo up to fourth and Tabor fifth. So things get tight, to be fair. Mm. Third to fourth. Uh, and in the men's, Nino is still leading from Van Der Poel, even though he's missed one race so far. And we know he's missing the last round at Snowshoe. I presume he's racing Lenza High this weekend. Uh, Surely Lenza High's got Nino Schurler's name all over it, isn't it? Well, what's, it's, what's it's like 20 minutes down the road. What's the yeah. reason for missing Snowshoe, do we know? I think um, probably just the case he's just ra you can't race that much no. and recover. Uh, so that's his reason. Well, that was his reason for missing round three in, in yeah. uh, Val Nord, I believe. But that this weekend was the second time this year that Van has gone one-one for short track and for XCO. Yeah. So when he's on it, he is on it. And the way oh, he, he drops exciting the guys. stuff, exciting stuff, and that. Yeah. So like we said, on to Lenza Heider next weekend. Looking forward to that. Where are you going, Steve, this week? Oh, crikey. Uh, uh, I'm actually actually not too far down the road. Uh, me and Chris are doing a three-day e-mountain bike race around Mont Blanc. Uh, yeah. 360 kilometres. Apparently, there's 280 kilometres of single track. Wow. Uh, so, it's, it's a pro-only, invite-only race. So, uh, I'm actually quite interested to And do... you got an invite? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a it's a fair, Don, it's a fair comment. Yeah, I got an invite because uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure e-bikes and racing goes hand in hand. But in terms of an adventure around Mont Blanc, that is unmissable, right? Well, it's something I've always wanted to do. Probably show a lot of them up with the climbing. Some of the stuff I've seen you climb up is pretty impressive. Have you seen the old Matt Hunter Tour de Mont Blanc video? I haven't seen that actually. Right, it's good. Right, let's do that. Yeah, it's another but one yeah, I pretty uh, pretty full on trip. What about you, Dan? What are you up to? Going to whistle it? No yeah, doubt? this podcast is slightly short because well, we're all busy. But uh, mm. yeah, I'm packing bikes in a minute to go to Whistler tomorrow. Whoa! Oh, tomorrow, tomorrow, mm. and for plenty of cool stuff, taking a downhill bike. First time running downhill bike in five years. What are you taking? Brand new Nuke Proof Descent. Mm. And also there is the Endurable Series from Whistler and next weekend. So we'll be doing I'm a podcast. To... Jack is also Jack. off. Jack, to... off his head. That I'm off, but... <laughs> it does, Jack. I'm going with Chris he's, he's... OP from GCN. Yeah, to, but he's uh, going high level, though. To go and film yeah. him racing... Mountain bikes. Uh, yeah, mountain bikes. Did I hear level. you say, you, you talked about some altitude numbers earlier on. Yeah. Did so I hear 14, you saying... 14,000 feet. 14,000 feet. feet of uh, climbing. Above 10,000 feet. Above 9,000 feet. <laughs> Still <laughs> above 9,000. The Leadville. Leadville 9,000. Leadville nothing. 100. That is a race that actually Lance Armstrong has done in the past. He's won. Mm. Hopefully Twice we'll see him. He came second once and... One. Make sure you heckle him if you see him. I, I tell you what. I tell you, in terms of physicality, I think Jack has got the is dealt, been dealt the card this week. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be brutal, Jack. Well, I'm driving. I'm not riding. <laughs> Holy crap! I'm not doing that. Right. No way. I die. That's it. That's it. Wrap up the podcast. You better join pack us. your bags. Pack your bags. You can listen to this on YouTube. Watch on YouTube. Uh, Spotify. 
Apple iTunes, Deezer, Audio Boom, all those places. Get on it. There is now 16, 15, I've said it at the start. I've forgotten already. 15. 15. See you later.